electric cars have a battery problem. It's not new, and it's not nearly as bad as it used to be, but people still want more range. So the longest range Tesla cars can get up to 370 miles on a charge, but most gas cars can do this in their sleep. So there are two main ways to fix this. Either make the battery bigger, but that's expensive, adds more weight to the car, and also takes up more cargo room, or pack more energy density into the batteries so that they can hold more charge in the same amount of space. And improving range this way is exactly what Tesla is trying to do. So if you've been following Tesla news at all, you've seen that their stock price has dropped down below $200, which isn't great, but they did recently complete their acquisition of Maxwell Technologies, who is famous for making supercapacitors. Some people may think that this is why Tesla was buying Maxwell, but they are actually also working on a dry electrode battery technology which is a lot more promising for what Tesla is trying to do. Before we can talk about what the actual dry electrode technology is, we have to understand how lithium ion batteries actually work. And I am by no means an expert in this field, so if you are confused by my explanation, there are plenty of other videos on the web that will explain it a lot better than I can. So if we look at the diagram of a battery, we have an anode, a cathode, and a porous separator between the two. The anode has a negative charge while the cathode has a positive charge. When power is pushed through the battery, it causes the lithium ions with a positive charge to move from the cathode to the anode and reacts with the electrons from the power source to charge up the battery. Then when a load is applied to the battery, say a motor or light, it causes electrons to be pulled away from the anode, then flow through the load to power it. The porous separator in the middle is just there so that only electrons and lithium ions can flow between the two chemicals. And this is why you usually see lithium ion batteries explode when they're punctured. That's usually that separator that breaks down and causes a big chemical reaction. So when these batteries are being manufactured, there's a slurry mixture that is created and coated on copper and aluminum to form the anode and the cathode. The metals then pass through some sort of oven so that that slurry mixture can harden up before it is actually assembled into the battery. But there's a problem with this slurry mixture. It contains a highly toxic solvent, which is not necessary in the actual battery chemistry. It's just there to create this slurry. Maxwell is trying to eliminate this by making this whole process dry, so you don't need a slurry mixture. This eliminates a lot of unnecessary materials that might be left behind in the drying phase and make their way into the battery. Maxwell claims this can improve energy density, but also add to battery longevity and durability. There's also less environmental impact because you don't need cobalt or that highly toxic solvent to create that slurry. And all of this is excellent news for Tesla as they are always trying to improve their battery technology, make them more efficient, and improve their range. So overall, I think this is a huge win for Tesla. Maxwell has already been able to implement this dry electrode technology in their supercapacitors, and they say it will be very easy to adapt to lithium ion production. This means it won't cost Tesla a lot to just implement it in their production lines when they're creating their batteries. Maxwell claims this will have a 10 to 20% cost reduction for implementing this technology, but more importantly, there will be a 16 times production capacity increase. This means Tesla will be able to produce more batteries in the same amount of time. So definitely be on the lookout for increased range in Teslas. I'm sure this will be implemented as soon as they can. So I wouldn't be surprised to see another big range hike in the next one to two years. Seems like a sure bet right now, but only time will tell. So if this video helped you learn something a little bit more about how dry electrode battery technology works, definitely hit that like button down below. If you like this sort of video, I do them every week, so definitely subscribe so you catch all of my new videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.